Hi everyone, I'm Charlene and today I am going to be showing you how to pre-shrink your wool fabrics. So as I'd mentioned in my last video, we got loads and loads of new dead stock um, wool suitings and coatings and like jacket weights and all, they're just all so gorgeous. Lots of them are ex-designer, really, really beautiful quality either made here in the UK or over in Italy as well. So I have two here. I have my, so this is the dark grey wool crepe. Oh, I'm so excited <laughs> every time I touch this fabric. Oh, I just cannot wait to have it um, on me. I just cannot wait to get this garment made. So yes, we have the wool crepe sitting and I also have the autumn check Bookly fabric this one has been selling out really really fast so if you did have your eye on it i think there's only a few meters left so i would definitely have a wee look and snap it up so today we are going to be pre-shrinking our fabric um you can do this at home yourself it is very simple it takes it does take quite a bit of time but i think it is worth it to know that you've done it yourself and um, the other options would also be to have it um, take it to the dry cleaner. Most dry cleaners can pre-shrink, but if you're doing that, you need to make sure that they don't iron any creases into it or steam any creases into it. You want it just all completely steamed flat. Um, I'm not, personally, I'm not sure how much that would cost. Um, I don't think it's overly expensive, but obviously if you can do it at home yourself, it is going to be a lot cheaper. Um, what we will be using today so if you your iron some irons even some domestic irons that you can just buy normally will produce enough steam to be able to pre-shrink your fabric to be sure we will be using a piece of cotton muslin so or like a cotton gauze so it's just really really fine piece of cotton I buy this by the meter usually and cut it into smaller pieces I would also use this when I am attaching my interfacing so when you're attaching your interface and your iron-on interfacing um, there is a risk especially with the thinner ones that some of the glue can actually travel upwards onto your iron and leave a slight sticky residue it's very very minimal but obviously over time that can build up if you're using a lot of um if you're sewing quite a lot so it is always a good idea to protect your iron with something and your fabric there's also then and we have all done it at some point even more experienced so it's it the interfacing does we it goes on the wrong way and it ends up getting stuck to the iron i've seen it happen so many times so it is always a good idea just to protect your iron with a wee um cloth as well and this one will absorb any of that excess glue as well so yeah and it's only it's a couple of pounds to buy on ebay or amazon or you, you might even find that your local store will stock a wee bit of it as well so it's handy to have a wee bit of that too um just for normal interfacing as well as freezing this so what we will be doing is soaking this so that it is damp not wet so not dripping wet just soak it so that there's some moisture in it and then we will use that over the iron to help um, increase the amount of steam that is on the fabric so we will get started so I have my cloth here that I have just soaked it can be a good idea to have um yep it's definitely well run out there it can be a good idea to have another cloth in the water as you're going although it doesn't take long for this to um soak up enough water it's very very thin so have your bowl of water close by and then lay your fabric on the board so as you were doing this you want to make sure that you have your fabric lying straight that it's not sort of going off at a slight angle or there's any bumps have it well smoothed out so that as you're steaming it you're not distorting the grain line it can be handy if you place your ironing board against some sort of a surface so i have this um unit here behind me as you're going it can help to have that to then put your fabric onto so that it doesn't hang and again start stretching as you are going so 
we are just going to place the cloth on and steam. So just hold the iron over the top, don't press down on it. And it should feel slightly damp to touch. Don't move it yet. So move on to your next area and steam that. So now we need to wait for this to cool down. So before you move it, um, as it's still damp and hot, you can again end up distorting the fibre. So you want to wait for this to completely cool down to touch. And then move your fabric and work on another area so this is where things can take quite a while it is quite slow going so i would recommend to have something on netflix as you're going and just um yeah so yeah get a tv show on or rewatch the sewing bee some of your favorite episodes and just keep moving along as you go so i've just sort of gently folded that up and we'll work on this next section So that is how, that is one of the best ways to um, pre-shrink your wool fabric and it has come up really, really well. All the creases are gone. After you have done that and it's all cooled, I would say keep it hanging up so that there's no more creases in it um, until you're ready to cut it out. And so yeah, keep an eye out. We will have more tips and tricks for working with wool and tutorials and things coming up. Um, if you would like, we can possibly do a sew along. If there is any videos or if there's any other um, techniques or any other tutorials you would like us to see here uh, or you would like us to do for you here, please do leave a comment down below and let us know. So thank you everyone for watching. I hope you find this helpful and I will chat to you all soon. Bye.